values and skills that will help you along your parenting journey. Please come out and join me. It's a very fun class, 10 weeks, and you'll receive a certificate. It's court approved and an excellent class. Thank you very much. Men's Bible Study, Wednesday at 7 p.m. All items left in the lost and found will be donated March 30th. Connect Home Groups meet the third Sunday of every month. Women's Bible Study, Wednesday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. My life has changed completely since I started this and really got serious. Without it, I would have never pursued God the way I am. I wouldn't have found my passion for worship. It's my family, man. It's, it's part of my life now. It's part of my journey. It's, it can be part of anybody's journey. I know in my heart that everyone needs a family like this. I forgot we wanted to welcome you here tonight. I got so fired up about that prayer into the jails, sending people out that we got to receive people in. So are you visiting here for the first time? The ushers will give you a little card that you can fill out for us. We want to welcome you and keep just your hands up. We've keep got your hands a special little treat and for you. A treat for you. Get a and, uh, coffee or a latte it? after It's service. a weekend of the beach or something? No, no, no. 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 Coffee, no. latte. Coffee, latte. So, yeah, we want. How many people awesome. we got from Lifeline here tonight? Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. All right. Welcome. We're so glad you're here tonight. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So let's give. Let's uh, welcome our online church. Oh, yeah. We got people watching online. We actually. We got, yes. Uh, let's we welcome got, who them. Who we got? We got. Uh, we got Scott Hansen in North Dakota with all the, the his crew. Awesome. He's trying to get him fired up over there. Scott and all the guys over there. You guys, there. give a wave um, to say Scott hi. and the Yell crew. Out. That's right. And, and we uh, have Mandy and Michelle. They're in Walla Walla right now visiting not, somebody. They're not Walla Walla Prison, are they? No, they're not in oh, there, but they're okay. visiting somebody oh, okay. there. Okay. Yes, so tell them hi because well, oh, they well, never no, miss church, them. and so they're online with us tonight. Good to see so. you guys. Yay. Welcome. So uh, JV at this time can be dismissed. This is our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Good, who are good luck down there, guys. Good kids. Good luck, teachers. Be good, kids. Bless your teachers. Yeah, be, be, a nice, be nice to those teachers. That's right. So um, this is the exchange recovery service. And around here, if you guys haven't figured it out, clean time, clean and sober time is like a super big deal. But we're getting so big that it takes probably five minutes to celebrate the birthdays. So we're going to do something different tonight. We're going to do 30 days. How 30 many 30 days, days we got? If you have stand 30 up days, you got 30 stand days. up. Stand up. Yay. Awesome. 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 60 days. 60 60 days. 60 days. Woohoo! Awesome. Yay. 90 days. 90 days. 90, 90 days. days. Awesome. Yay. Six months. Six months. Six, six months. months. Any six months or something? All right. Yay. Awesome. One year. One year. One year. One year. <laughs> nine, nine, nine months. Okay, here we go. Let's we got all together. Have one. Nine months. Nine Jeremiah. months. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> One year. How okay. about uh, Any more? anything over a year? Shout it out. Shout it out. We awesome. got it. Woo! Yes. Be the rest of you standing. You guys are awesome. 
You guys we are love awesome. birthdays. We love clean we time. Super do. Awesome. You guys are amazing. Um, so this week, we're also starting back into um, Clark County Juvenile Detention. We've got some faces, I hope, mentors going in. Stephen Miller and Tammy Lynn. I think she might be sick tonight, but they're leading the group. Let's give them a hand. Yep. And we, we really, we need to get um, more helpers going into the juvie. Um, how many were in juvie? Clark County Juvenile. Hoo hoo. Okay. There you go. Awesome. Well, if you guys have one year clean and sober, are involved here, and we know who you are, and three years no crime, then please see Stephen after service. Is that, is that no crime or no, no... No crime. No crime or... What? That they've been caught for. Yeah, yeah that you've been caught for. <laughs> No Old convictions. Behavior. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Yeah, no. And then trying to help people out. <laughs> Get them along, bring them along. Oh boy. Sorry. Um, and then after service, directly after service, the jail team is meeting in the fire fireside room here. Uh, is Heather. There food? No food, oh, sorry. Okay. It's just a quick five-minute meeting, but uh, we have some more clearance forms if, you, if those uh, that we've talked to want to get involved with the jail team ministry, um, see them, and then we're going to be going over some stuff that's happening this week. So we're going to be at engaging inmates like five different ways. It's super cool. We've got the spiritual 12 steps group starting. That's so cool. Yay! <laughs> and... Uh, and then we have four hours one day that we're going to just get to hang out with the inmates and just start building meat, relationships. We're huh? not eating the mystery meat, right? No, yeah. not during okay. not during feeding okay. time. That's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might start making you guys really nervous if you, during feeding time. And then, um, and then we're also going to. They actually requested to have some of our DVDs of church service to be able to be played there as well. And then we're going to go in and um, interview for housing for the men's houses and the women's house. And so, anyways, lots of different ways we're going to be able to engage inmates, you guys. And we really need, we need to kind of grow this team that you saw up here. So please see Heather after. That's cool. It. So All right. you guys want to take a minute and stand up Say and shake somebody. five hands? <laughs> five hands. That's All right, it. just five. No smoke we're break. It. Stay here. <laughs> Lauren. Okay, let's go. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. I've been ready all day. How many of you know 4th of July is almost here? Are you ready? I'm ready to barbecue some meat. Let's gather in. I want to I just show you a little clip of what, what's been going on here in uh, the house of the Lord and uh, how... Uh, let me just show you, we got a short segment of, of Faces of Hope tonight I want to share with you. We couldn't get everybody in here. Um, there's lots more. How many of you guys like the pictures over in the, the in the pictures? Great. Coming on. Pretty, they haven't got my mug shot up there yet, but I think they're working on that. Um, so let's uh, check this out. Yes. 
Pretty amazing. Would you, would you pray with me? Father, we come into your presence tonight, and this is sacred ground. This is a place where you want to meet with us and show us things. And tonight we're going to be talking about the whispers that you do for us, God, the way you whisper into each one of our hearts and our ears and our minds. And Father, I pray right now against any distractions that might come into this place, and we pray for healing and provision and deliverance tonight in Jesus name amen if um, if you're here tonight to get drugs or to sell drugs um, don't even think and, and I, I'm being serious now guys seriously because we've had we've had this issue imagine getting 300 um, ex addicts together there might be a little bit of stuff that um, some residual that comes along with that but if you're thinking about that don't even think about it don't even do it because this is sacred ground and and you don't want to mess with that. And if that does happen, um, we have a, a, a different re-entry program for you, and it's not the kind that we're engaging in next week. Um, and uh, there's also special sentencing guidelines for you, and you won't like that either. So uh, I'm being serious. Uh, don't stop what God is trying to do in this place. And um, that's... Hearing the whisper of God, um, and when I say that to you tonight, I, there's, there's a lot of different maybe things that come to mind, but, but uh, I believe that God has a way of just whispering to each one of us as, as we draw close to him. And, and I want to talk to you a little bit about this tonight because I, I believe that, that you, each one of you here, is on the cutting edge of what God is wanting to do in this community. And, and in order for you to do that, we need to hear um, the whispers that he has for each one of us. And, and um, in John chapter 10, verse 27 uh, through verse 30, it says, my sheep listen to my voice and, and I know them and they follow me. And, and it says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand and my father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand, and I and the Father and, and are one. It's the old dad's, my dad's better than your dad deal, right? My dad can beat up your dad, right? <laughs> Only this time it's true, <laughs> for real. We're talking about the God of the universe, your Father in heaven, and, and it says right there that, that uh, they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand and 
And so what that says to me tonight is that, that once you come to Christ and once you have that relationship with God, you are secure. And, and the enemy would come and like to try to make you feel like you're not, but you are tonight. And then the, the benefit of that happening in your life, the benefit of you being a child of God is that, that he comes alongside you and gives you insight gives you revelation, gives you his spirit to walk with you, his spirit to show you things that, that you never maybe saw before. And, and um, th those are called the whispers of God. And, and I want to just go down this line a little bit tonight in, in the message. I want to read that to you in the message because that helps me to understand it. Um, it says, my sheep recognize my, my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them real eternal life. And then listen to this part. It says, they are protected from the destroyer for good. They're protected from this destroyer for good. How many of you had something that was destroying your life in here? And you realize that when you come to God, that you're protected from the destroyer for good. For good. That's what the Word of God says. It's not just for a little while. It's not just till you feel like doing it again. It's for good. And so you need to give that up and turn it over to God. And, and he whispers to you on a daily basis, if you will listen, that he has something better for you. You don't have to go back to that place. And, and he comes alongside you and it says that, it says that um, no one can steal them from out of my hand. So who's coming knocking at your door trying to steal you back into that old way of life? You see, we have, a, we have an enemy and we have a God, and God is on our side, and he's snatched you out of that old lifestyle, and he's set your feet on the solid rock, and he's made you different so that you don't have to go back there. And it says that the Father who put them under my care, listen to this, is so much greater than the destroyer and the thief. Someone came and tried to steal your life from you. Now, I'll guarantee you that if someone came into your house tonight and tried to steal your children or to kill you, that there would be some of, a bunch of you, all of you in here, that would stand up against it. So what's the difference next week when God is whispering in your ear that he has a plan and a destination for your life and the enemy comes in to steal and destroy? You need to raise up a standard against him and say, no, you're on dangerous territory here because I am God's. And that's what we need to do. And you see, the whisper of God in our life, it sets us up to where we are winners. We are more than conquerors. We are able to, to overcome the temptation. We are able to overcome the relapse. Did I say that? The relapse. You know what I'm talking about tonight. 34-year-old woman left detox last week. They found her in a bathtub dead. That story goes on and on and on. Young man last week decided he'd go one more round. Fortunately, he was revived and taken to the hospital. Here tonight, he made it. The destroyer came to steal. The thief came to steal, but the, 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 our daddy is bigger than the thief. He destroyed the thief. He took captive. He, he has no ground in your life, but you have to listen to the whispers of God in your life. They are greater than the whispers of the enemy. And he wants you to come to this side, and he wants you to do what he's called you to do. No one could ever get them away from him. I and the Father are one heart and one mind. Do you realize who you serve tonight? Some of you tonight are going to make that decision for the first time ever in your life. You're going to say, God, I want you to come into my heart, and I want, you, I want to live for you. And that will be the beginning of you having the one take care of all of your issues, all of the strife, all of the things that you're going through. Do you hear God's voice? There, the, the coolest thing about this is there isn't one person in here tonight, not one person in here tonight that can't hear God's voice. Every single one of you can hear God's voice. Sometimes we don't listen. 
God's been talking to you for a long, long time. Some of you here tonight have, have put your ear away from him. Some of you here tonight feel like you, you don't measure up, and so how would God ever speak to me? Does he really understand what I've gone through? Do you have his heart? It says, I and the Father are one, and, and we are with God. And so he gives us his heart. Do you, do you have his mind tonight? Do you have the mind of Christ? Do you have his feelings? Do you have his thoughts? Do you have his, his, his way of doing things? I believe that if you'll learn to hear the whispers of God, that it will blow your mind. It's blowing my mind. It didn't take much, but it's blowing my mind. Every one of you, there, there's so many testimonies here tonight of, of people who have heard God's whisper. Jeremiah, where are you at? Um, come on up here for a second. Come right down here and stand. I'm gonna, I, can I have that? Thank you, baby. Is this on? Jeremiah, you heard the whisper of God. What did he tell you? You got two and a half minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll make this quick. Um, I mean, I'm living proof that there is a God. You know, I should have died three, four times over. Um, when I came to the church, when I came back into recovery, um, I really had nothing to live for anymore. I didn't really didn't care about living. Um, I got seven wonderful children, and I couldn't even look myself in the mirror anymore. You know, um, I wasn't mad enough to take myself out, you know, so I was figuring... You know, if I do enough dope, drink enough alcohol, just maybe somebody, you know, might hit me with a car or shoot me or something. Um, I went to the hospital because I did too much meth, and I thought my heart was going to explode. And um, I'm walking out, you know, and I see, uh, I see my sponsor. And he was like, JC, where you been? And he was like, and then, and then he said, damn, I know where you've been. And uh, he was like, hey, hey, we love you. And, uh, you know, the rooms are always going to be there for you. You know, and this is where the story gets good. And so I, you know, I reach out and I, you know, I go back to his house and I get back in the AA. But then I meet up with my brother Donnie. And, you know, I went to a meeting with Donnie. And then ever since then, you know, I started coming to this church. You know, and um, God is working miracles in my life, man. I mean, they gave me the keys to the lot with three days clean and sober. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Praise God. You know? Um, it was God. I never sold a, you know, I, I never sold a car in my life, really. You know? Um, and they kept me, they kept me grounded, you know? And they said, hey, JC, come to church. Pray to God. Things will change. And it gets better and better. And I can't even, I'm shaking right now. I can't even, man, I love God. I've never been on fire like this. I never used to go to church. You know, and I can't even, my life is good. I'm still on house arrest. I still got some stuff to handle. But, you know, I love God, man. I love this church, man. And, you know, if you're on Lifeline or, or you're thinking, man, there's no God, yes, there is. Amen. You know, because when I came back, it was bad, you know. Um. Man, so just hit your knees, man, and, you know, he does answer prayers. He answered mine. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Gentle whisper. Walking out of the hospital and, I mean, what are the odds? Well, the odds are pretty good. You'll see somebody in recovery at the emergency room. Um, but... Um, <laughs> What are the odds? Because that's what we do, right? But what are the odds that his sponsor is walking out? And you see, God used him to give that gentle whisper of, J.C., I want you back. J.C., come. Some of you are here tonight, and God is whispering to you. Some of you are here tonight, and uh, you're here from Lifeline, and God's whispering to you tonight that this is it. This is the end. Not the end of your life, but the end of the old life and the beginning of a new life. And that's what he's whispering to you. There's a difference between um, God's gentle whisper and our gentle whisper. God would not whisper to you tonight that uh, 
that guy or that gal that you just met in treatment or drug court is the love of your life. <laughs> he does not say that. He will never say that. That could be still maybe some leftover drug-induced something. <laughs> Just so you know. You see, his sheep hear his voice. And when you enter into that relationship with God, it's, it's a sacred thing. And then he's able to, I, I don't even know how to explain it. How do you explain it, Glenn? I mean, it, it's... It's so real. And you know what I'm talking about because you're hearing it tonight. And it says in, um, I think about 1 Samuel and, and, uh, and the boy Samuel was serving God in 1 Samuel 3. It says, under Eli's direction, and that was at the time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. And one night Eli was sound asleep and his sight was very bad so he could hardly see. And it was well before dawn and the sanctuary light was still burning. Can you sort of picture the surroundings? And Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God where the chest of God rested, the, the ark. And, and then God called out, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, yes, I'm here. Then he ran to Eli saying, I heard you call. Here I am, Eli said. And he said, well, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And so he did. And God called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. And I heard you call. Here, here I am. And again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And uh, this has all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. And it was before the revelation of God had been given to him personally. And God, here he is, called again Samuel the third time. Yet again, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Yes, I, I heard you call me. Here I am. <laughs> and that's when it dawned on Eli that, that God was calling the boy. And, and um, so Eli directed Samuel, Go back and lie down if... That voice calls again, speak, God, I am your servant, ready to listen. Samuel returned to his bed, and then God came and stood before him exactly as before and called out, Samuel, Samuel, answered, speak. He said, I am your servant, ready to listen. And what, what's really cool, I love that story because it really, it's, it, it's a lot like us, is a lot of times it takes a long time for us to hear God really speak to us and some of you here tonight and and God is speaking to you and and maybe you've you've lived on somebody else's uh, relationship with Christ but tonight it's time for you to live on your relationship with Christ and and you know it, it was it's interesting I love the word of God because it's got so many cool stories like this that you can relate to the fact that that would you be able to say God speak to me I'm your servant and and I'm ready to listen are you ready to listen tonight? No, really. Are you ready to listen? What, what would it be like if you really, really listened tonight? Because there's some of you here sitting tonight that, 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 that this is going to go right over your head. But if you would take it into your heart, oh, there's so much waiting out there to be done. There's so, many gra so much ground to be taken, and, and we need this army of people to rise up. And, and hear the whisper of God, um, not just in a church service, but, but on a daily basis as you seek him. Do you realize that the church is open every morning from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 6 to 8.30? That, that you can come and you can sit right in one of these chairs and there's music playing and, and you can just listen to what God has to say. What has that done for you, Heather? Changed your life. And he's saying things to her that he's probably never said before because she didn't go there before. She's going probably through one of the worst times in her entire life, and I've seen a spark in her that's unbelievable, and it only relates to the fact of the power of God working in her life. And, and it's about hearing the whispers. Uh, um, maybe you're like me, and sometimes it takes a while to hear. Um, I'm male, and I'm ADD, so that, that's, that's part of it too, but... But you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, do you realize that we're going to spend eternity with God and we get, need to get to know him and to listen to his voice? And, and maybe God wants to have a conversation with you tonight. What would he say to you? 
Um, he has something for you. Um, he has uh, maybe to give back. He, he maybe has that you want to take the story of hope into the jails or juvie. Um, he whispers to me all the time. It's crazy some of the things he says. Um, really crazy. Um, I have this vision that we're going to own the Value Motel. We'll buy new mattresses. I just... I, I, just, I just do. I, 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 God's been saying that to me, and I, I don't know how, but I, I just, I, isn't that weird? I don't know. What is he whispering to you? Because he's God of the universe. He has everything at his disposal. And, and, and do we think big or do we think small? Do, do we think, I mean, you used to think big. <laughs> Right? Big bag. Right? <laughs> Come on. Well, let's bring it down to where we live now. Can we? What, I mean, come on. You were running and gunning on the other side. Let's run and gun for God. Let's run and gun and do something good for him. I mean, when God whispers to you, listen to this. When God whispers to you, the enemy yells. He does. Some of it, it, it just gets loud in your head and the enemy yells, yell back. It's time to yell back. The, the enemy tries to get a, a voice of fear in us. And, and I mean, we need to yell back. We need to yell, the, my sheep recognize my voice. Do you realize who you're talking to? That's what we need to say. God has a whisper for you. God has a plan for you. If you... And, and you don't have to stumble through life making wrong decisions. I mean, if you'll begin to speak God's word and seek God and pray, pray, God, give me Samuel ears. Give me, give me the kind of ears that says, God, speak to me and I will listen and I will hear your voice. And, and you see, the plan of God is counting on you to hear his voice. Listen to that. The plan of God is counting on you and me to hear his voice. And, and, I, I did a, a funeral on 12-23-08. How many of you in this room have been affected by this man? Would you stand? Okay. How many of you in the room, stay standing. How many of you in this room I've been affected by this man in, a, in an amazing way. How many of you in this room have been affected by the people standing in this room? Would you stand? What do you think that means? That's powerful, okay? Of the people standing in this room, how many of the people standing in this room have affected your life? Would you stand? <laughs> what happened? Go ahead and be seated. Somebody heard the whisper of God, and somebody made a difference, and, and Donnie made a difference in people's lives, and, and he made a difference, and, and we need to continue to do that. You see, what he made a difference in my life is he was a great example of what it looked like to serve people and rescue people from the depths of addiction. And we had been working with people in addiction for quite a while. And then when I was asked to do his funeral and I saw all of the people that were surrounded and came and, and spoke and wanted to speak. And, and I thought, man, something's missing. We need to carry this on. We need, to, we need to fuel the fire and we need to listen to what God's saying to us. It's one thing, you see, to hear the whisper, but it's another thing totally to do what you hear him say. If we would all do what he says. You see, when you hear the whisper from God, it, it will require courage to move in faith. God won't lay everything out. This is a scary part. See, when he does that, God won't lay everything out so every question is answered at that point. <laughs> I wish he did. 
You see, once you act upon it, God will confirm it. Once you step out in faith, then God will begin to confirm, and oh, wow, will he? I mean, it's amazing. That's the best part. In Acts, the 18th chapter, and, and I'm going to keep going here, and we're going to get through this. In the course of listening to Paul, um, a great many Corinthians believed and were baptized. One night, the master spoke to, the Paul, to Paul in a dream. He said, keep it up and don't let anyone intimidate or silence you, no matter what happens. He says, I am with you, and no one is going to be able to hurt you. You have an idea, how, you have an idea of how many people I have on my side in this city. That was all he needed to stick it out. He stayed another year and half and faithfully teaching the Word of God to the Corinthians. You see, there, there may be times where you, you begin to do something and, and you maybe get discouraged, and, and it's no different than Paul right there that he said right there, I am with you and no one is going to be able to hurt you. Well, God is with you and no one is going to be able to hurt you. And there's a whole host of people here tonight that if we link arms and we gather together, that, that there's nothing that we can't accomplish in this community. And I believe that with everything that's in me. And God wants to whisper some things to you. And some of you have been hearing God's whisper for a long time, but you have ignored it. What do you think that is like? I know what it's like because I've, I've ignored it too, and, and it's torment. <laughs> it's not good. It's worse than a bad burrito at Taco Bell. It's bad. That's bad. I, I, I think about Abraham. Remember Abraham? He was tune, in tune with God, and he was used to hearing God's whisper, and, and, um, and, and he just trusted God. And, 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 man, I want that kind of trust. Don't you want that kind of trust where you just, you just go abandon and say, yes, whatever you want to do, God? And this was Abraham. He says, they arrived at a place to which God had directed him, and it's in Gen Genesis, Genesis 22. I think verse 9, um, God had directed him, Abraham built an altar, he laid on the wood, laid out the wood, and he tied up Isaac, laid him on the wood, Abraham reached out, took the knife to kill his son, and just then an angel of God called to him out of heaven, Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham said, yeah, I'm listening, <laughs> yeah, I'm listening, and I think a lot of times we go to the edge, and, and we go to that place, and and, and we're almost, we're, we're totally beyond our comfort zone. And then, yes, God comes and, and he says, hey. And you say, yes. <laughs> he has your attention, doesn't he? And I, I think that God wants us to live on the edge, doesn't he? And, and don't you want to live on the edge? You do. I know you do because you have for all your life. And, and don't you want to live on the edge with supernatural power, though? Don't you want to see God bring something out of nothing? Don't you want to see God set the captive free? Don't you want to see God uh, raise up those people that, that you used to be involved with that are no good? Who are they no good to? And God has a plan for their life, just like he has a plan for your life. And he wants to bring them to the other side, and he needs you to live on the edge to go get them. Don't go one by one. Go two by two. Right? Right? You know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm just going to stop by there and make sure they're okay. No. No. Because you know what's on the counter. Right? Don't even mess with that. But you know what I'm talking about. See, tonight's the, guy, tonight's the night. Your greatest whisper from God are not in the past. You need to begin to pray for for Abraham's heart. If you're single here tonight, he knows who you're supposed to be with. He does. I know you're all worried about it. <laughs> or who you're not supposed to be with. He knows that too, for sure. I don't know why I got off on relationships tonight. Let's see. I think I heard the whisper of God, and he just told me to share that. Would you just relax and let him guide you and listen to his voice and and let the shepherd just take you under his wing and, and, and show you not to run off the cliff? That's translation for something else. <laughs> if you're waiting for God to give everything to you before you step out, you'll never see it materialize. I'm just here to tell you that right now. If you're waiting for God to just lay everything out and everything will be perfect, 
dream on. It isn't going to happen. But when you step out, when you go where he wants you to go, it'll materialize right before your very eyes. You go, man, I could have never done that. And he says, I know, I helped you. And here we go, and let's do this. And, and right now he's whispering to me about reaching the lost and the addicted stronger than he ever has before. I don't know. It, it, it's like it, it, you guys motivate me. I mean, seeing all these people in here, that, that it looks like a jailbreak. It's amazing. It's just exciting. And, 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 and you're all up in here together, and you used to be stabbing each other, and now you're hugging each other. I mean, it, it's great stuff. And I mean, it, it's, it's crazy what God's got us into, isn't it? And there's no way that it could be done without his touch and his provision. And he's right in the middle of it. His spirit is drawing us all into this just big melting pot of all kinds of stuff and it's just so cool i mean look at elijah here's elijah i may have to go along tonight there he was he told he told um god told him he says go stand on the mountain at attention before god and god will pass by this is a cool story it says a hurricane wind ripped through the mountains and shattered the rocks before god and you think okay here it comes but God wasn't to be found in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. Can you imagine it? I mean, put yourself in some of these stories. I mean, these stories are cool. If you were watching this on DVD, you'd be into it. But can you, can you just wrap your brain around this tonight? I mean, here's an earthquake. Dude standing on the side of a cliff and an earthquake. He's freaking out. And he's saying, okay, God, tell me something. Right? Nothing there. After the earthquake, there's fire. I mean, he's got it all here. Wind, earthquake, fire. I mean, you guys be right at home right here. There's some excitement going on. No pipe or anything, but there's a lot of noise, right? And it's going crazy in here, right? It's just nuts. And he goes, okay, nothing. And then a gentle, quiet whisper. What is he saying to you tonight? For some of you, when I think about what happened in that guy's heart right there, when he heard the whisper of God and he did what God said, listen to this, don't miss this. It impacted three generations. God's greatest whispers are what he wants to tell you tonight. Let me leave this with you tonight. Who are you hearing this whisper from? It says, so who is like me in Isaiah? Who holds a candle to me? It says the Holy One. Look at the night skies. Who do you think made all this? Who marches the army of stars out each night? Counts them off calls them each by name, so magnificent, so powerful, never overlooks a single one. Why would you ever complain, or Jacob, or, or whine, Israel, saying, God has lost track of me? He hasn't lost track of you tonight. He knows right where you are. He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening to the whispers of God? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. His, he's, he's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired or doesn't pause to catch his breath, and he knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts. <laughs> For even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall, but those who wait upon the Lord, God, get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. You see, once you have God in your life and you listen to that whisper, you will never be the same something wells up in you. It's called the Spirit of God, and, and He empowers you and calls you to be a warrior, calls you to be a fighter. He calls you never to give up, to push ahead.
you do that video, please? A playground. It's a battleground. So today, I will give no place to fear or failure. I will not accept a trace of apathy in my attitude or actions. I will reject complacency and embrace the greatness that God has planted inside of me. I will waste no opportunity to glorify God and maximize everything he has entrusted to me. I will fight. My battle is not against flesh and blood, but against a spiritual enemy who opposes me. So I will draw the battle lines and face my enemy with a bold determination. My enemy fights against me because he fears me. Every time I resist him, he must flee. And every time he reminds me of my past, I will remind him of his future. I will make no excuses, but through every obstacle, I will find a way. I will not procrastinate my progress. I will not defer my destiny. I will not waver when I'm weak. I will not cower when my circumstances take a turn for the worse. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will fight. Even if I lose the battle, I will win the war. Because I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I will reject the lies that echo in my mind, telling me that I don't have what it takes, that my best is behind me, or that humiliation awaits me. The devil is a liar, and my God always causes me to triumph. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord, I will fight. I'm unashamed to represent a kingdom that is unshakable. No one will be able to stand against God's plan for me all the days of my life. With my God, I will advance against every truth. With his help, I will scale special and I want to have a relationship with you that goes without saying for some of you here tonight he would say you used to know me you used to walk with me why don't you come back and we'll try it again there's a little picture that I share each week and it's a picture of Jesus standing door of your heart and uh, it's really amazing to think about the God of the universe tapping on your door your heart can you imagine really if he was here in the flesh tonight and and um, he would just come up to you and say I'm so glad just rock your world <laughs> he's here and he's saying that to you tonight how many of you would 
How many of you just stand on the other side of the door and say, no, I can't open it. I think it's God. What? He's going to see everything. And he's on the other side saying, no, I'm going to fix everything if you'll just let me in. I'm going to take all your pain. I'm going to take all your anger. I'm going to take all your frustration. I'm going to, I'm going to walk with you because you're going to spend eternity with me anyway. I'm going to walk with you, and, and we're going to hang out together. We're going to do some crazy stuff. How many of you want to take a card tonight and say, I'm opening up, man. I'm letting him in. You girls came ready. God's whispering tonight, isn't he? How many of you like to be yelled at? Really? God doesn't yell. He whispers. Anybody else over here? dedicated that little boy when he was just a baby, right? That is so cool. All hearts clear. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, you know, I've lived on, I closed the door a long time ago and I used to, I used to hear God whisper, but lately it's been loud in my head. I can relate to that. But now I, I need to just reopen that door and just have that fellowship back. I need it. I need so bad to hear him whisper to me. Maybe you're here tonight and you just want to reopen that door. I want to give you that opportunity. I better have the ushers. Anybody else? Wait a second. I gotta, we got to reload here. Anybody else? This is the, the most important part of our service right here. It really is. Because we're building an army of, of, of people that are capable through the power of God to demolish strongholds and take territory and just just give the enemy a bad day <laughs> it's gonna be cool isn't it for a fact that there's some people here that that want to pray with you that took a card and I'm so excited for you tonight because you've heard God speak and I want you to just come and stand right here and put your toes up against the, the stage and somebody's going to come stand behind you they're not going to do anything freaky they're just going to just going to pray for you I want everybody that took a card to be on the front, and then I want people 
to stand behind you and pray for you. Pastor Glenn and Theresa, baby, could you come on up, please? Wow, is anybody left in their seats? <laughs> this is cool stuff, isn't it? Do you have that microphone? Let me hand me that microphone. We're going to just pray for these guys and... Uh, I'm going to have Pastor Glenn, maybe I want you to be able to go along and just pray for people in Theresa. And I'm going to ask Pastor Glenn to lead them in a, in a prayer. And, you know, guys, I'm so proud of you tonight because um, you saw how Donnie Noya's life made a difference in other people's lives. And so if you all do what he did and heard the whisper of God and begin to pour into people's lives, um, we need a bigger auditorium. We, we do. Um, because when somebody says recovery in Clark County, they're going to say this place is where things are happening because God is in the center. It's, it's nothing about us. It's about God is here, and, and wherever God is, people will go because there's answers. So I want you to, I'm going to have Pastor Glenn just lead you. You know, I was thinking about a, a verse in Mark chapter 4. Yes. And this is so real for everybody, but. You know, you made a decision tonight to do to open the door up. The Bible says Satan comes immediately to steal the words on your heart. Immediately, was he's already working a plan to steal the words, steal the decision that you made. So don't let him steal that. It'll come through a it'll come through a relationship. It'll come through somebody. Yeah, oh, that was dumb what you did, or, or you're not worthy of that. Well, if we were worthy of it, then we wouldn't need him. We're not. We're all not worthy of it, and he makes us worthy. Let's just all bow our heads, close our eyes. Just say this when they say, Father God, yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. I open up my heart to you. You said, if I'd open up my heart, you would let me in. I'm now yours, and you're now mine. And I rejoice over my decision tonight. All of heaven is rejoicing with me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 What a Let's party, huh? Proud of you guys. Now, we've got a little packet I want you guys to take right here. Each one of you fill out one of these. Uh, Grab one of these packets here, guys. One of these packets. Fill we want a, your address, phone number. We want to follow up on you and make sure you, you're doing good. All of us must have things. Have a great week, guys. Thanks for coming to church. Bless you guys.